Hi there, it's Jennifer. I hope you're having a great week. Today I'm going to share with you a way to create foiled backgrounds using both stencils and stamps. Now I've done many foiling videos over the years and I will link to a playlist of all the different ways you can add foil to cards here. So be sure to check those out if you haven't before. Today I'm using a new product. All you need is the product, some foil, and a laminator. Any kind of inexpensive laminator works and you can get beautiful shiny backgrounds using stencils or stamps. Now I need to apologize about a few things before we get started. First, this video is a little disjointed and that's because I had some folks working at my house today so I was in and out of the craft room, so I apologize for that. Also, the video is longer because I have so much to share. And finally, keep in mind that this was an exploration for me. The first time I did these techniques, so you're learning along with me. So let's get started by creating foiled backgrounds using stencils. I'm using three new stencils from Simon Says Stamp, and I am in love with the detail of these stencils. I will provide the names for these as we use them later in the video, but I just wanted to show you real quick how detailed each of these are. I like that they're round, so you can make a focal point in the center, and these are beautiful with just simple inking over them. I also have a bunch of pieces of cardstock. I just dug through my scraps and cut down a bunch to four and a quarter by five and a half. So all the pieces today, I'm going to be using that size. So for the first example, I'm using Simon's Stamp Star Medallion Stencil, and I'm taping it onto a piece of cardstock to hold it in place. I will be applying over this the Deco Foil Transfer Gel. This is the product I'm using today. It's inexpensive. And what you do is you apply this over the stencil, let it dry, and then you can add foil to it and it sticks to this gel. So this gel is kind of like the consistency of maybe like a wet icing or ketchup or mayonnaise or something like that. So I'm just going to spread it across my stencil, trying to get as even coverage as I can. I'm using a little spatula for this. This is from Ranger. It's inexpensive, but you could use the edge of a credit card if you wanted to. So I'm going to smooth it out and wipe all the excess back into the jar and then remove my stencil. Now I will wash the stencil immediately in soapy water or soak it in water until I can uh, scrub it with soapy water later on. You wanna make sure you don't let this dry on your stencil. For the next example, this is craft cardstock. I'm using the circular lace stencil from Simon Says Stamp. Again, I'm applying the transfer gel over the top of this and I will wash my stencil immediately. Now this gel is white at first. You need to let it dry completely before you do the foiling and you'll know it's dry when it turns clear. So I'm gonna set it aside and it does take some time to dry. So keep that in mind, you wanna kind of plan ahead of time. Now for the final stencil from Simon Says Stamp, I'm doing this on a light pool cardstock, just smearing the gel across it, removing the stencil carefully, and there you can see the beautiful detail we can get. Again, I'm gonna set these aside to dry for quite a while. And while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can use the transfer gel for stamped backgrounds. Now keep in mind, if you're using stencils, you're gonna get a really solid, great foiled result because you're putting on a thick layer of the transfer gel. With stamps, you're gonna get kind of an artsy look. It's not gonna give you a perfect image, but it's pretty forgiving. And I'm gonna share some tips for getting the best results you can. To test this out, I decided to use a super detailed background stamp. If I could make the foiling work with that, I think I could make it work with a lot of regular thin lined images. I'm using my Misty today, you don't have to. I removed the black foam so that I could use this large cling stamp. This is a new Simon Says Stamp Rebecca Lace stamp. This is super fine detailed, I mean the finest lines, and it's just beautiful. Now there are many ways you can center up this piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock in the Misty so that it's at the center of that background stamp. This is the easiest way I found. I just center my cardstock onto the stamp itself and then I close my Misty upside down. So it's gonna be upside down. Then I flip it over and carefully open the Misty back up and where that cardstock is, is center on that background stamp. So I'm gonna put a little piece of tape to hold it in place. And now it's time to ink up our background stamp using that transfer gel. 
Now I showed two different ways to do this today. One is I used an empty distress ink pad. This is a DIY ink pad and I spread some of the transfer gel onto it. Now this ink pad does not absorb the transfer gel. It was just a hard surface with a little bit of give and I thought that it would give me the best results for inking up the stamp. You don't have to buy one of these ink pads. I had one of these empty ink pads uh, on hand, so I thought I would give it a try. I'll show you another way you can do it also, and the results are pretty similar. Now that gel will dry on there over time, so you need to kind of re-ink it often. So I'm using this to dab all over the background, and I found that this gave me pretty good coverage. I don't want globs of the transfer gel in different places because that'll give me globs of foiling. And so that ink pad was pretty good at helping me give a nice even coverage. Now you can't see it really here, but I'm just gonna set that aside to dry for some time. It doesn't take long at all. And I stamped another one on this dark teal cardstock. I tried to put more transfer gel on for this example. They both worked out great. Now if you don't have an ink pad like that, here's another thing you can do. I just smeared some of the transfer gel onto an acrylic block. Just kind of put some on there and now I'm just using a makeup applicator to kind of dab into the transfer gel and then dab all over my background stamp. Now you want to try to get as good of coverage as you can without having globs of the transfer gel in the creases of the stamp. Also, this dries, it's sticky and it dries sticky. So you want to make sure that you do it as fast as you can so that you can still stamp it while it's wet. Once you're done, you're gonna to wanna to scrub your stamp with some dish soap and some water. I just use my fingers to rub it off. You could use a toothbrush if you wanted to. So there we have a stamped image on some shimmer cardstock. You can kinda of see it there. I'm gonna let that dry completely. Okay, so once all of my stenciled backgrounds and all of my stamped backgrounds were completely dry. It's time to add the foil. Now I uh, have used many different types of foil over the years and I usually end up using the deco foil the most. Now I have a bunch of old colors of deco foil and also some new absolutely beautiful luscious colors from Gina K. There are a new line of deco foil colors and I will link to those too. Keep in mind, these are heat transfer foils. These are a special type of foil that is meant for this technique. You can't use aluminum foil for this one. Since I know my stamped backgrounds are dry by now, I'm going to start with foiling the stamped backgrounds. Then we'll do the stenciled backgrounds. Here are some of the Gina K Designs new colors of, card, of um, foil. There are many in a pack. I'm going to start with the turquoise one. This is such a beautiful pool color. I'm using an inexpensive laminator for this and I'll talk more about that in a moment. I have a folded piece of parchment paper here and an extra piece of white cardstock just for a little bit of a shim. I'm taking one of the pool pieces of cardstock that we stamped that transfer gel on. I have the transfer gel facing up and I'm going to put the foil on top of that with the pretty side facing up. I will fold the parchment paper over it and put it into my laminator. Now this is the Royal Sovereign Laminator. This is very inexpensive. It comes in a nine inch and 12 inch. This is the nine inch. I have it set to the five mil setting and I let it get hot for about 20 minutes before I went to do this. Even when the ready button was on, I waited till 20 minutes so it was good and hot. That really makes a big difference. After it runs through, I'm going to remove the foil from this and you'll see the beautiful results. Now there are some extra bits of foil here and there. You can leave it like this, but I find you can really show that fine detail of the background by taking a stencil brush and going back and forth lightly over it. Or you could just use a plain um, paintbrush of some sort just to knock off the extra foil and check this out. You get this beautiful fine foil detail on the back of your cardstock. Such a gorgeous look. Remember, that background stamp was very detailed, so my foiling is detailed also. Now you can use the Heidi Swap Mink Machine for this or any laminator you may have. So just try what you may have already on hand. Here's a piece of craft cardstock that I stamped the transfer gel on, putting a white shim cardstock behind it and some gold foil on top of it. And then I'm going to put that in the folded parchment and run this through to show you another example. 
I found out about that cardstock shim on a package of deco foil, and I thought that was a huge help. I found that when I use that extra cardstock, cardstock shim, I actually get better results. Okay, so once this runs through, you don't have to wait for it to cool at all. You can just go ahead and peel off the foil, and I really love the look of that gold foil on that craft card. This time I'm just using a clean paintbrush to knock off the extra foil, and you can see the beautiful results you get. Now I normally don't have to use a brush to kind of wipe away the extra foil, but with this detailed background I found I needed to. So it just depends on the stamp that you use. Now before we turn these into cards, I wanted to show you how to foil the stenciled transfer gel backgrounds. This is really fun because you get really solid foiling and there's dimension to it. So beautiful. So I have one of my craft backgrounds that I use the transfer gel and stencil over. You can see it's no longer white and it's nice and clear, so I know it's ready to foil. I put a shim of cardstock behind it, and I'm putting some mango colored foil from Gina K Designs on top of it, putting that in a folded piece of parchment paper and running it through my laminator. If you don't have parchment paper, you could use a thin typing paper. That usually works fine. Just make sure that you let your laminator get good and hot. I mean, that makes a huge difference on good results. Okay, so when I took this off for the first time, I was blown away. Now the edge of it's going to be a little messy here because of the stenciling I did, but look at that result. Anywhere there was transfer gel, you get really good coverage with the foil. You get beautiful smooth shine and there's dimension. Since that transfer gel was over the stencil, you have some dimension to it, kind of like you would with an embossing paste. So let's do another example. You can see my dried transfer gel on this piece of pool cardstock. I'm putting some turquoise foil on top of that, a shim behind it, and running it through my laminator again. Now this gives beautiful shiny results. I mean, super shiny. I really find that it looks best when you do a tone on tone um, look where the foil matches the background cardstock. But you could go crazy and do any color combination that you want. And you see that leftover foil on the left there? Keep that. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you a trick of what to do with that. So I made many backgrounds with st the three stencils I showed you and the transfer gel and a bunch of different colors of foil. Here I'm using an opal colored foil. And I'll link to all the different ones I used below. Okay, so I went ahead and foiled a bunch of backgrounds. Now it's time to turn these into cards. Once I show you how to make one of the cards, I'll show you all the examples I made. They all have the same design and products on top. I'll also share some other tips at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Okay, so I used a new Simon Says Stamp twisted stitch border die to cut a little white curved piece to put on the bottom of my card. Since the stencil didn't cover the entire card the way that I placed it, this will cover up the bottom. I also die cut some hearts. I did a solid one to match the background using the Hero Arts nesting die set. And then I made a smaller heart with some stitching on it from the new Simon Says Stamp Wonky Hearts die set. These are beautiful heart dies with some faux stitching on the edge. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use the blue or the white heart, so I die cut both. I also wanted to have a thanks die cut done in the same colored foil as we have on the background of our card. So I needed to come up with a foil die cut. So what I did is I die cut the word thanks from some deco foil peel and stick toner sheets. This has toner on the front, that's the black, and stick on the back. That toner sticks to foil when we run it through the laminator, which you'll see in a moment. So I've die cut the little thanks from that, and this will be foiled to match the background. You could have used that transfer gel and just kind of smeared it onto some cardstock, let it dry and foil that, but this just seemed faster. So I'm taking this, I'm putting it into the folded parchment with the shim, and I have that little die cut and a piece of the deco foil. I'm going to run it through my laminator just like we did those backgrounds. I also needed a little sentiment underneath it. I wanted to white heat emboss on some vellum. So I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Thoughtful Messages stamp set. This is beautiful and has some gorgeous script words, but I'm just going to use the little supplement sent sentiment on today's card. So let me show you how all these pieces come together. I trimmed my foil background a bit and added it to a top folding white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. 
I have some foam tape to glue on the little curved piece on the bottom of the card. And then I'm going to adhere both of those hearts onto the front of the card. And by the way, these hearts are both die cut from the same colored cardstock that I used on the background of my card. So once I have my hearts there, I have that white heat embossed little sentiment from the thoughtful messages stamps that I just showed you a moment ago. And I'm actually holding it down with that sticky foil die cut that we created. So you can see that the foil die cut overlaps the card and the little vellum strip. So it's holding it in place. I'm really making sure to press that down with my bone folder so that it stays put. I also decided to trim the vellum strip down and cut a little V onto the left end. You're seeing me kind of pull this together as we go. I wasn't really sure where I was going, but I wanted to share all the steps with you. Okay, so now it's time to add some little gems. I have these Lucy Cards Rainbow Gems. These are hard to find these days because they're so popular, but I promise you that Simon's Stamp has more on order. I put a little drop of this liquid adhesive behind the vellum and on front of the vellum, and then I'm going to put a gem on top and hold it there. That little gem and the adhesive behind the vellum are gonna help hold that vellum in place. I am using my little jewel picker to pick up the little gems and put them into my drops of liquid adhesive. This is Ranger Multi-Medium and a matte finish, and it'll hold these nice and tight. So there you can see the little gems, they're iridescent, along with that foiled background. A lot of shine on this, and that little faux stitching detailed also. Now I made a bunch of cards and they all have the same design and those same sentiments on them. So I thought I would go ahead and show you a closer look at all of the backgrounds, since they're really hard to capture in a photo. After that, I have a few more tips for you. Let's start with the foiled stamped backgrounds. This one was the dark teal background where I stamped with the transfer gel and added a turquoise piece of foil on top of that. You can see for this one, I decided to skip the foil die cut and just do a white die cut instead to keep it quite simple. I did white heat embossed different sentiments to go with that on the vellum, so you'll see a variety of them. On this particular example, it says from across the miles, and that's from a stamp set that's meant for envelopes, and I'll show you that in a few moments. Here's another example of using the foil with the transfer gel stamped background. Here we have the gold foil on the craft note card, and on this one I have a gold die cut thanks to match that background. I also created some with a different background stamp. This is the Simonses Stamp Flora background stamp. It's an older stamp that's beautiful. I just wanted to show you one that had a little less detail to the background, more solid lines, just to show you the results that you can get. Here's another example. This one uses a silver shimmer paper with silver foil on top. This silver shimmer paper is from Nina Cardstock and it comes in a variety pack with other like neutral colors of shimmer and they work great with the foil. And then Simon Says Stamp has metallic envelopes that match nicely, so I thought that would be perfect too. Okay, now for the stenciled backgrounds. Here we have the turquoise foil on the turquoise background. This one I did the transfer gel over a stencil and added the foil to that. So here you can see another example. This has so much dimension and shine to it. So when you touch it, it definitely has a lot of texture. Now there are some specialty deco foil. This is a new one from Gina K Designs. It has like little dots on it that really catch the light big time. And I thought I'd give that a try and check out that background. It is so much fun. It'd be fun for a party card or something a little more playful, but it actually worked for this design also. This one definitely makes the biggest impact when you tilt it in the light. If you're looking for something a little more subtle, try using a gray cardstock with silver foil. This is really beautiful in real life. I could see this being good for a wedding or anniversary card. And I kept it simple by keeping to the grays and not adding color. Now this one's very striking. This is a dark gray cardstock with this silver foil on top. It's really beautiful in real life. I wish I could capture that shine. And here's the background that I first did with the foil and stencil. This is the one that I wowed when I took it out of the laminator because I was so impressed with the results. This is the craft cardstock with the Gina K Designs mango colored foil on it. Really a beautiful looking copper color on the craft background. Next up, I have a few different cards where I use the opal foil. So this is kind of iridescent looking. This is on white cardstock with the 
opal foil. So it's very subtle. It's hard to capture in the video. And I use some pool accents with that. So you can see the pool cardstock and the pool little gems on top. Here I use the opal foil on a light gray cardstock. And this really does allow the light to capture some of the color that you get in that opal foil. But you could use silver here or whatever color you may already have. All the colors seem to work really nicely on a light gray background. And last but not least, I did some opal foiling with the stencil and transfer gel onto a piece of shimmer white cardstock. This is from the Nina Variety Pack, which I'll link below. So it's hard to see here, but I have shimmer cardstock, plain white cardstock, and that opal foiling. So the hearts are the shimmer white cardstock. I did the foiling on the shimmer white cardstock, and the rest of it is plain white cardstock. So it really gives you nice tone on tone soft look. And I added some colorful gemstones on there also. And then I have matching envelopes from Simon's Stamp that are a shimmer white or metallic white envelope. Now I like to do matching envelopes with all of my cards and I'm really excited about this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. This is the envelope greetings. It has lots of envelope greetings that are perfect to go right on the flap of your envelope. They're the perfect size to stretch across the flap and they're really fun messages about how there's a handmade card included inside and it's a nice surprise. So what I like to do is put one of the messages in my Misty and I go ahead and ink it up and stamp it onto the flap of a bunch of envelopes. That way I have some envelopes stamped and ready to go whenever I need them. These sentiments really work well with whatever occasion card you may have. So I made a bunch of thank you cards today with all these foiled backgrounds. Keep in mind there are many ways to foil. I'll link to some other videos. I think everybody gets different results. So try a few things and see what works best for you. But before we go, I wanted to show you how to use that leftover foil for another technique. I'm not going to make a card, just wanted to show you. So I have a leftover piece of foil here and a piece of that toner paper that I used for those thank you die cuts earlier. I'm going to put this through my laminator and what happens is that leftover opal foil, that's the piece that I used here, sticks to that toner paper. And now you have that foil on that black background. You could use it like this, or since there's still some toner exposed, and toner is what causes that foil to stick, you can run it through again with another color of foil. This time I'm using some passionate pink foil, running that through my laminator. And anywhere where that black toner is exposed, the pink will stick. So you end up with a beautiful piece of opal and pink foil so pretty. I'll try to do this in a future video. I've done this technique in demos before, but I need to share it in a video. So there you have it, a long-winded foiling background video for you. I hope it leaves you inspired. Remember, there are many ways to do foiling, and I link to other videos here in the middle. Thanks for watching. All the products are linked below in my YouTube description, or you can head over to my blog for more. Hope to see you again soon, and have a great day.